Dan Larson here at the photo booth with my RetroCon 2019 recap, all the stuff I picked up and very generously had gifted to me at the show this weekend. You might be able to hear it in my voice that uh, it's a little uh, shaky this morning. Uh, it was a it was a really really great weekend. A lot of met a lot of people, talked to a lot of people. You know how those convention rooms can be very loud, uh, especially during the karaoke contest. You end up like shouting at each other at the table and in the aisles and stuff, uh, just trying to hear each other clearly. And you know I'm. More than happy to talk to anybody who wants to talk about toys and whatever. So I did a lot of talking uh, over the last 48 hours. Over the last, what's twice as 48? Uh, over the last uh, three days. There we go. It's uh, It was a lot of fun. Uh, like I said, the, we, we had a panel. It went great. Uh, but for, first off, I just want to get to all this stuff that uh, I picked up. So on our first lap around uh, Saturday morning, Greg and I, producer Greg and I took, uh, took a walk and went and found some stuff. And the very first booth, and so I want to set this up and I want to say I apologize if I get any of the names wrong on this. I'm terrible at this right now. Convention appearances, you know, as Toy Galaxy are still kind of a new thing for me. And I'm bad at what I need to do is I need to start taking uh, photos with people and writing names down and doing stuff because I'm going to forget people's names. And I feel bad about it, uh, especially when they give me cool free stuff. And the worst part about this one is uh, I actually bought something from this vendor last year. If you go back and watch the RetroCon 2018 video, I bought a, uh, a, a HC, what's uh, the tiny little, uh, they're like the... They're like the Robot Spirits Gundam figures, but they're smaller. Anyway, it was a Death Scythe uh, figure. It's awesome. I bought it from him, and then I show up this year, and very first thing, first thing Saturday morning, he's like, Hey, Dan, uh, I've got you this uh, translucent Cortana figure that uh, lights up. And then also this translucent Ezio Auditori. Uh, I don't know how it's pronounced. I've never played the game. But uh, another translucent figure with this super awesome Gigando bird here uh, that is going to be great with all kinds of other figures as well. And uh, I don't know his name. I forgot his name. <laughs> I tried to find him in the list of vendors. Uh, but there's not really a lot of links in the list of vendors on the uh, RetroCon page there. Uh, so I couldn't drag him down. So I'm very sorry. I hope you're watching this video. Please comment. Let me know if it was uh, what uh, what what the name of your business is uh, so that I can actually uh, tag you if you're on Instagram or anything like that. Uh, but thank you very much, at the very least, for giving me these things, for selling me the Gundam last year, uh, and for whatever, uh, whatever happens next year. So a cool thing that... A cool thing that happens at uh, some of these East Coast shows, New Jersey, uh, Philadelphia. This was in uh, Oaks, Pennsylvania, which is eastern Pennsylvania. A cool thing that happens at some of these shows here is that NECA has a warehouse. I don't actually, I don't know where their whole actual home office is, uh, but they do have a warehouse out here, and they do a NECA warehouse sale at, at these events, and it's awesome. Uh, I can't I can't understate how cool it is. I guess I can't overstate how cool it is. Uh, they just they just bring us a, a truckload of stuff from the warehouse and they just blow it out at uh, incredibly cheap prices. Uh, this actually shouldn't be in here. So I've managed to take advantage of that at uh, a couple of different New Jersey collector cons and now at uh, RetroCon. Last year at RetroCon, I didn't get over that table uh, soon enough and just everything was gone. Uh, this was I was there first thing in the morning, went right to that table and was like, I need to do some shopping here before all this stuff is cleared out. So just incredible. We got uh, Harry Potter. This is from uh, 2000 and there's no date on here. It's from earlier. It's from Order of the Phoenix. So it's from uh, a couple years ago. So I grabbed that one. I grabbed uh, Harry Potter. This is uh, Mrs. Toy Galaxy is a big Harry Potter fan. We have the SH Figure Arts figures. Uh, we had picked up the, uh, there's a diorama of the scene in the graveyard during uh, the Goblet of Fire. Uh, we picked that up super cheap. That's where actually where I got some of my first Predator figures as well was from that. Because I was like, let's take a shot at them. They're super cheap. If I don't like them, I can get rid of them. Um, and, uh, the, his re <laughs> some of those figures have, have reassured me that, uh, not all NECA stuff is super brittle and, uh, some of it still is the older stuff. So, uh, I also picked up, I picked up this Freddy versus Jason. It's like a hero clicks kind of sort of game here, but there's an actual whole game in here. Force to fear game collector's edition. Um, I liked it. I, you know, I thought that the figures were pretty cool. Uh, and it had the prices. So this was like five bucks, five bucks. Uh, I think this was 10 bucks. We're going to try out the game, uh, producer Greg and I, uh, as well as uh, Mrs. Toy Galaxy and Mrs. Producer Greg. Sometimes we do the, the tabletop board games and stuff, uh, have game night. So we might try that out. Um, this, oh, so uh, they had the Clear Predator. This is from Predator 2. I have the other one. I didn't know that there were two different Clear Predators. Uh, the one I grabbed, I grabbed at Awesome Con uh, last year, earlier this year. I don't remember when it was. Um, but it's the, the one I have is the newer one. This one's from 2012. So I hope, my hope is that this one is just as solid as that one. Cause that one's actually pretty, uh, pretty tough. I haven't had any breakage issues with it or anything. And I knew it was different because, uh, this one, 
this one has a skull in it, and now I'm trying to remember if the other one has a glow-in-the-dark mask. I don't think so. I think the other one... I'm blanking on it now. Not important. The important thing here is that this is a different one than the one I have. They had this, uh, and it was like 10 bucks. This, I think, was 10 bucks. Uh, I wasn't going to get this one initially. Uh, but again, it's like at these prices, I was like, how can I say no? And then <laughs> I'm like, look, I know you're clearing out the warehouse, but why do you still have these things in the warehouse? I had these years ago when they first came out. Uh, in 2003, it's ridiculous. Tron 2.0, I think it was just a video game, just a PC game. I don't, I don't know if it actually made it to any consoles. Uh, I don't think there was a supporting cartoon or anything. Uh, but, you know, there was no other Tron stuff going around. There's no other figures, no, there's barely anything else now uh, as it is. So, uh, I, I got rid of these when I, when I sold through, uh, uh collection 2.0, downsizing and all that. I had a, I, obviously I'm an opener. I had opened all these things up. So at the time... There was some value in them, so I was downgrading, focusing my collection, focusing what I was doing, uh, and sold them. Uh, and then, so when I saw these in the package for $5 a piece, I'm like, how can I not get them? My only disappointment was that they didn't have the other two figures here, Mercury and IC Regular. I don't know. I don't know anything about the characters. I was just like, holy cow, I can't believe that. I'll probably be opening those up again uh, just to check them out and just to pose them, because I dig Tron, and, I mean, five bucks. <laughs> it's just, I think all of this stuff altogether cost me... Uh, it was either 55 or 60 bucks uh, for all that. And I don't, I don't usually talk about prices and whatever, but that was the whole point of this was that they blow out that warehouse stuff at super cheap prices. So, so thanks to NECA uh, for, for doing that. And thanks to uh, RetroCon for getting them out there again. These were, I don't want to say they were a weird purchase for me, but I didn't expect to buy anything like this. I don't even know what the actual company name on these is, who the manufacturer is. Um... It doesn't matter. Uh, they're not, I think it's a third party thing. They're not really officially licensed. Uh, but this guy, you know, I, I was just looking to buy stuff that I didn't have, that I hadn't seen before. Um, that, those are the kinds of things that, you know, people ask, what are you looking for at the toy show? What, what kinds of things are you specifically collecting? And I'm like, whatever catches my eye, you know, like just neat things that I don't normally look at and don't normally look for and can actually see them in person without just like blind buying them on Amazon because I'm bored or something. Uh, which I don't do, and I don't want to do that. So I don't actually usually come across these kinds of things. So it was neat to see these things in person. So these uh, these were out on the table, and uh, they're kind of like loyal subjects figures. I don't know who, again, I don't know who makes them. It doesn't matter. But uh, I saw Soundwave, and I was like, oh, shoot, Soundwave. <laughs> I love Soundwave. And they're really poseable, elbows, shoulders, uh, in both directions, neck, you know, hips, ankles. Uh, but more importantly, he had this adorably tiny little laser beak that uh, I was just absolutely fell in love with. Uh, I saw that Thu recently posted a video of a giant laser beak and I was like, oh yeah, look at my fingernail sized uh, <laughs> the laser beak. Uh, I don't know if he has this one already, probably. But uh, and once I saw Soundwave and laser beak, uh, there was also a Starscream. You can see Starscream pictured on here. But And he had all three, but I didn't... Uh, these were a little pricier than I would normally have liked to have paid for something like this. Uh, but he also had Megatron, so I'm like, all right, cool, I'm down with Megatron uh, all the time. Uh, it's unfortunate that because they are unlicensed, they don't have their uh, faction symbols. Uh, but Megatron came with Tiny Ravage, <laughs> and I'm like, uh-oh, no way I'm going to leave here with uh, Tiny Soundwave, Tiny Laserbeak, and not getting Tiny Ravage. If Honestly, if Starscream had come with uh, another tape, Buzzsaw, you know... Rumble, Frenzy, whoever, doesn't matter. I probably would have grabbed it just to get the tiny tape. These don't transform. Uh, Laserbeak's got like a neck pivot. I don't think Ravage does anything. He's not even really the right colors. Maybe I'll repaint him or something. But I was like, oh man, those are so adorable. I got to get them. And so I grabbed them. And that was that was like an impulse buy on the way out of the show, basically. Impulse buy on the way out of the show. That, that makes it sound like, you know, anything at the show isn't an impulse buy. <laughs> Everything here is an impulse buy. Uh, you don't know what you're going to see, so you don't really know what you're going to buy. So it, when I'm going to shows like these, uh, the m more and more... You know, I, I have a, a budget set aside for specifically for purchases like this. And like I said, I, I'm looking for stuff that I don't normally buy. I don't normally buy uh, online. I like seeing stuff in front of me. And that's why, you know, Marvel Legends, uh, Black Series, those things tend to be the bulk of my collection. Transformers, because you can see them before you buy them. Um, Mythic Legions, I love them. The price per figure is a bit higher than I, I would like, but I also think that it is worth it in terms of the quality. Um, I haven't been able to go in on the Kickstarters for whatever reasons at the times, uh, but when I see them, it shows. The, the two things I'm really looking for, it shows like this, and it's weird, but what, it's whatever it is, uh, are Mythic Legions and Robot Spirits, and, and those are two lines that I would love to collect. 
more in depth, but you know, the price per figure, these are usually like a hundred bucks, 90 bucks. I think basic, uh, army builder figures for mythic legions run like, you know, 25, 30, which is standard for a six inch figure. Uh, but you know, the nicer individual figures can push 40, 50, whatever. It is what it is. So when I go to shows, I'm starting to, to focus more on those uh, as opposed to picking up like vintage items or, or newer items. Uh, th these are the kinds of things I want. So there was a guy, uh, there was a booth that had a bunch of import stuff. You know, he's a he, uh, Bluefin is, is one of his vendors, one of his uh, suppliers. And he had the uh, brand new GPO one. Uh, the only other Robot Spirits figure I saw there was a regular RX-78, but it was the uh, prototype version, which is the black and the red, which I love. I love that paint scheme, but I was like, ah, I can't spend 60 bucks and get the exact same mold I already have. So he had this. I think it was marked. Uh, I think he had it marked 65 I, uh, or 75. I think I got it for 60. Uh, and, you know, it's it's got the foil. It's not a knockoff. And I've already opened it. It's fantastic. and I love it. But I'm like, ah, crap. Now that, that means I got to get the GPO2, which I want. <laughs> I wasn't really looking to, you know, I wasn't looking to make that like a, a real quick purchase or anything. They just came out. Uh, they're just hitting now. Uh, so I'm going to have to be on the lookout for GPO2, but I was super psyched to get this thing. Uh, and then Mythic Legions, this is, his name is Thistlethorn. Uh, it says that he's a uh, last of the elusive woodland goblins. Uh, I grabbed it because Mrs. Toy Galaxy reads uh, a lot of books from the like Redwall series, uh, a lot of the sort of anthropomorphic, you know, uh, Mouse Guard is the comic book series, graphic novel series. You know, she loves Dark Crystal and Labyrinth and all those kinds of things. And so we have a lot of things in our collection that are sort of these like, you know, woodland creature, warrior type characters. Uh, and I saw this and I was like, yep, if there's one more Mythic Legions figure we need to have in our collection, it's this little guy. He's adorable. And all I can think every time I look at him is like, I may have to hire somebody to repaint that head uh, to make it look like our, our, our cat Lupin. Uh, and then I might have to get another one to make it look like Wednesday. But uh, I was pretty psyched to get both of those things. Two things I can't wait to photograph from my Instagram, at Toy Galaxy, if you're not following me already. This box is not, uh, it's not shoes. It is a shoe box, but it doesn't have shoes in it. It's a bunch of uh, really fun stuff from, uh, hang on, let me check this note here. It is from Ed, Jenny, Julian, and Sonny. Uh, they're out of New Jersey. Uh, you can check them out at uh, dadjokes76 on Instagram. Um, this whole box is a, uh, just, it's a lot of fun. And it's a very thoughtful batch of things. Uh, we've got a, uh, oops, we've got a uh, Firefly QMX, I don't know these ones, Mini Masters. Um, in fact, I don't even know who this character is. Now <laughs> I say, uh, this is Badger, Little Damn Heroes. Um, it's thoughtful, but I actually, I don't know who that is. Uh, it's, I'm guessing it's from Firefly, which I have seen some of, but I'll be honest, I haven't seen a lot of it, so the character doesn't jump out right uh, for me. Uh, but Evil Dead 2, uh, both, both Greg and I are fans. I'm going to say I'm a fan. I've seen it. I love the character of Ash. Uh, Greg is just, uh, producer Greg is beyond a fan. And, uh, oh, this hasn't actually been opened. Uh, so I'm going to have to open that up in a bit. But uh, this is a, what is it called? Super Emo Friends uh, Evil Dead figure. I know uh, producer Greg isn't going to necessarily want that, uh, but I'm sure he will appreciate uh, the thought. There's a couple of Build-A-Figure pieces in here. We've got two legs and a torso and a head. Uh, I'm going to have to match these up with the pieces I already have. Oh, I definitely don't. This is uh, Sauron, so I definitely don't have uh, another Sauron in progress, I don't think. Um, but I definitely have some other... I'm saying... Pro uh, Swamp Man, Thing Man uh, pieces. Uh, I don't know where that's going to match up. Uh, and then uh, this is Ultimate Green Goblin, which those pieces are so common, it's ridiculous. Um, in here we've also got a... This was really cool. Uh, Evil Dead 2. I don't know where this came from. Oh, it's Loot Crate. Okay, all that cool stuff comes from Loot Crate. Uh, I'm not trying to promote them or anything, because I think they're already done. Aren't they out of business or something like that? Anyway, we've got this really fantastic keychain. Uh, marked Evil Dead 2. It's got the uh, boomstick and then the chainsaw is a, a key holder So you put the key in and the basically the The butt of the key is in here and the key blade sticks out uh, So that your key actually looks like the chainsaw itself. That's really cool. <laughs> I didn't know I don't pay attention to a lot of the loot crate stuff Obviously, so I didn't know that that was a thing that existed uh, But that's one that I think producer Greg and I may actually have to fight over and then last in here We've got an X-Files uh, dimensional poster, and I opened this up earlier. It's really cool. It's the uh, I Want to Believe poster, 
And then the actual little UFO that goes in here is the three-dimensional piece. Uh, there's two halves of it that are tucked in here. You can snap those on so that the UFO itself is actually the three-dimensional element to it. So uh, thank you very much to Ed, Jenny, Julian, and Sonny for all this, this box of really awesome, great stuff. These are pieces that <laughs> I don't even know what to do with them. They're so awesome. Uh, I had never seen anything like these before. Uh, Producer Greg tells me, uh, and, and Carol told me, that uh, these were featured in an ad, I guess. Not these specific ones, but there was a, a promotional ad that had uh, flow from Progressive action figures in it. Uh, and I guess for the folks who work for Progressive or Progressive dealers, I don't know what the terminology is, brokers, uh, within uh, the insurance uh market uh, actually got like little samples of them and these look totally posable they have cool accessories that are going to be great to use with other action figures that are roughly six seven inch scale uh, and i just i'm stunned that they <laughs> went through this much effort to make these things they look like a blast uh, and carol from uh, i think on the vendor list they are listed as hang on i wrote it down so i wouldn't get it wrong uh hoster gebhard collector's insurance it's something to think about. I'm not trying to plug it right now or whatever. Uh, I just wanted to focus on these figures and say thank you uh, for how cool these are. And I can't wait to get those open uh, and have Flo pop up uh, maybe in some of my Instagram photos. <laughs> Jason uh, uh, Reichert, he's a vendor at, at RetroCon. J, the letter J, Reichert37 on Instagram. Uh, check him out. He gave me a bunch of stuff. Very, very kind, very generous. Uh, I'm not going to show it all off here right now. Just a couple of key pieces uh, to keep this efficient. Too late. Uh, we got a uh, Star Wars Disney Store Boba Fett pin. Awesome. We've got a translucent, which I actually have, you know, one or two of these Robocop figures. I have the glow in the dark one and I have the regular one. I was not aware that there was a translucent one. <laughs> so that's really, really cool. Uh, I don't know if it sparks or anything. Ah, it looks like it does have a light up feature here uh, somewhere. Oh, the button's on the front. Ah, it lights up. There it is. Very cool. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, and I don't know if NECA's done this one yet. I know they redid the glow in the dark one. Uh, and some of the others, but uh, he also, Jason also hooked me up with, and he hooked me up with some stuff last year as well. Uh, I very much appreciate it, uh, this uh, Boba Fett blaster um, that uh, still works. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking I may just repaint this. You know, I don't love the colors on this. I like that it has the uh, symbol there on the, on the stock, but I uh, think I'm going to have to repaint this and put it in the background. It's a little undersized. It's not actual full-size blaster like you would uh, see if you were making an actual costume but in terms of just putting it in the background of our videos uh, i think i can repaint that thing put it back there with uh, some of our other faux weapons so that's really cool thanks again to jason uh just for being a good guy and uh hopefully he had a great weekend i checked in with him a couple of times said he was doing well so that's great and thanks for all these uh cool things look i already told you i was the worst at this and i need to get better at it uh this is this is uh, a Instagram account called Sentimental Toy Photos. He was also an exhibitor at the show. Uh, check him out. Uh, this is a framed image of Boba Fett, the Kenner, the vintage Kenner Fett, obviously. You know, I don't have to tell you that. Uh, but it's like a, you know, macro lens, super close up of the figure. And, uh, and a nice presentation. Matt, uh, it's not, I thought it was matted. It's uh, got a border. It's in a nice frame. And uh, this is what uh, they were exhibiting at the show. And he was nice enough. I didn't get his name. I'm sorry. He was nice enough uh, to, to come over to our table and give me uh, this piece, which I greatly appreciate. Obviously, I, it's, it is not just a handsome photo of a very handsome action figure. Uh, it is a nice piece of sort of... Uh, it's like a you know quiet, reflective piece. Uh, but it really does sort of... In, it emphasizes those things that I really like, the, the imperfections, uh, you know, the, the focus on it being just a very simple, almost an abstract thing when you sort of see it. Uh, it's all glary when you see it at this uh, size zoomed in like that. Very cool piece. Uh, check it out. I don't, I don't know if it's just actually I'm scrolling through his Instagram page right now. It's not just uh, Star Wars stuff. So check that out. He's on Instagram. Uh, give him a follow. So the, the very first thing that happened the second I walked into the uh, exhibition hall, for RetroCon was that Kevin from SEO Toy Review on YouTube, uh, he's probably SEO Toy Review on Instagram as well, uh, handed me <clears throat> three vintage Kenner Fets. Uh, he has given me a couple of Fets in the past, and I greatly appreciate it. Uh, these are all in excellent, well-worn condition, very gorgeous figures, uh, and uh, advances the set along quite a bit. These are numbers 467, 468, 469. 
And uh, that's amazing to, to get uh, that many in one time from one person. Uh, I, I, Kevin's just a good guy. He volunteers for the show. I think he volunteers. I don't think they're actually paying him in any way other than, you know, free admission and that stuff. Uh, he helps out with the panels. He's basically he's my go to guy. If I have any questions or concerns or need need anything, I know that Kevin's going to be there to help me out. And that, that goes pretty much for, you know, if I got questions uh, just in general about toys or whatever, uh, check him out on uh, YouTube. Uh, and uh, see if he's on Instagram as well. So that was three from Kevin. Uh, and then Matt, uh, another uh, uh, fan of the show, <laughs> came over to the table. And he gave me a Boba Fett. Uh, so that is number 470. I got my list over here. Uh, that's number 470. This guy is just, he's, uh, there we go. He is worn he is loose he's missing a lot of paint he is uh God, look at that face look at that face right there there we go focus there we go just the the color variations on these things uh never cease to amaze me uh so that's uh 467 68 69 470 uh and then greg not not producer greg different greg uh came over to the table and he had actually gone and purchased one at the show and this thing is in absolute mint condition bright gorgeous color with the blaster tight joints just a thing of absolute artistic beauty so we've got those five after that i got jason came over to the table uh jason had also just purchased a figure from the show and if i can get this bag open uh this was number 472 another very well-loved piece uh, some more color variation in there. I haven't checked all the uh, country of origin stamps on these things yet, but they're probably all Taiwan. Hong Kong, excuse me. <laughs> it's like, which one's the rare one, Taiwan or Hong Kong? Because I don't really care. I just, uh, you know, they are what they are. I'll bet this one's a Taiwan. Yeah, Taiwan. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so that was another one. So we got six there. And then uh, Travis came over. Uh, and, you know, I just... I can't say thank you enough, uh, not just to, to everyone who, who came to the show, uh, not just to people who gave me stuff. That That's that's uh, above and beyond. But anybody who came over to the table to say hi to myself, to producer Greg, to Mrs. Toy Galaxy, uh, that came to the panel, just, just an amazing, amazing thing to happen. So this was from Travis. This is number 473. And then we had uh, Greg, actually, the other Greg. Yeah, excuse me, Jason, not Greg. Jason came back. He had another one. And then after Jason, uh, that was all on Saturday. On Sunday, I went shopping and happened to find a booth that <clears throat> had four more of them. One, two, three. This one had a blaster. And four. I think actually two of these had blasters. Uh, so I managed to score four of my own beyond things that were being gifted to me. Uh, so those four are 475, 476, 477, and 478. Blaster goes over there. And then we had Chris from Gorilla Bugs. Uh, he stopped by and he hooked me up with another one. And then we had Noel uh, stop by with his family. Uh, he's a big fan of the show. Very happy to meet him. Look at this thing. Ah, look at that. The shoulder pad barely has any paint left on it. The mask is all messed up. This is the first time I've seen this much paint taken off the armband there. That's number 480. Uh, and then lastly, we had the Grayson. I'm just calling it the Grayson family. That was my note here. Uh, but it was actually... It's Jonathan, Grayson, Chase, and Victoria. Uh, they all stopped by uh, and gave me the last one of the show. This is number 481. Look how loose this thing is. That's so good. Uh, so 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 total Boba Fett's to get us up to 481. That's ridiculous. Uh, thank you, everybody at RetroCon uh, who, who hooked me up with a Boba Fett, including the people who sold them and the people who gave them to them. It was, it was great to meet everyone there. And then lastly, uh, Dan from Pennsylvania. <laughs> it's crazy that it would end on Dan. Uh, he blew my mind. He's a big fan of the show. And uh, he brought me this. Uh, and his, his justification was, you know what? 
I am sick of hearing you talk about this thing. It was it was a nice, you know, uh, humorous way of putting it. He was like, you can stop complaining about it now that you don't have the SH figure arts, Sun, uh, Sun Vulcan, Volshark, and Volpanther. Uh, I got this for you, so enough. Move on. Find what your next uh, <laughs> your next grail item is because you have this one now and you're done. And I was just like, holy cow, man. And we had a great conversation with him. Uh, in fact... He gave me the whole set, even though I've already got Vol Eagle. That's fine, because there's two different Vol Eagles, so I can pose one with the sword, one without the sword. Uh, but I just... I can't I can't say thank you enough. And I, and I know I, I keep saying that, but it's the truth. And not just to Dan, uh, but to everybody. Uh, you know, pr producer Greg and I, Mrs. Toy Galaxy and I, we haven't been to... We went to this show last year, so I can't say we haven't been to this show before, but we went to this show last year. Uh, and we just went as attendees, and we got to walk the floor and uh, met Pixel Dan in person for the first time, got to shoot a video with him. And it was a really great experience. We saw Cybertronic Spree last year. Uh, so to be invited to come back to the show was a pretty special thing. And to be able to 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 be able to share that experience with you know my wife and producer Greg, who's uh, my you know creative partner, uh, my business partner, my my one of my longest you know longtime friends here, uh, to be able to share that experience with him and to be able to see how Toy Galaxy has become you know a thing. It's it's a thing that people uh, enjoy with us and that we enjoy with them, and how we've been able to grow it from you know just the two of us sitting in my living room making jokes about toys and movies and video games and stuff, uh, to see how that that's actually reached out into the world and, and people are starting to connect with it or, or have connected with it for a while. You know, we've there were you know, several kids who came up and, and were very clearly fans of the show and that wasn't just something that you know their parents had said, oh, you need to watch this because they, they don't really know what the old toys are necessarily. And, you know, we get younger kids saying, ah, you know, I watched you my whole life and it's like, you, 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 the show's as old as you are. <laughs> so it's, and you know, we get people my age, producer Greg's age, we're old people. And it's, it's just neat to see how we've pushed and, and worked and, you know, tried to make a, a special thing that it, it feels like it, it actually has become a special thing. And, you know, we had uh, a nonstop uh, people coming by our table just to say, love the show. Thank you. Big fan. I love watching. And, uh, you know, that that's neat and it's special I, we see the numbers come in online but the numbers don't you know mean anything those aren't people they're just numbers it, it's neat to see people in person see some of these names that show up in the comments all the time people people sharing videos liking commenting the subscriber names people on our patreon uh to, to put those names with faces and to meet people and shake hands uh, and just talk about toys for a little bit and and have that kind of experience with people we had a panel on saturday at four o'clock we, we would have been blown away if, you know, 20 people showed up to it. And, you know, it was almost full. It, it, it had to have been over, it had to have been over 75 people. It was amazing. I didn't know what to expect. I'd never done a panel like that before. I'd never done a Q&A. We weren't even sure what we wanted to do. And so to, to have that many people show up and, you know, we, we had on the drive down, we had prepared questions uh, just in case, just in case it felt totally flat and nobody had anything they wanted to ask and people were just there to be entertained. You know, we had to, we prepared questions and we didn't use a single one of them. We had incentive prizes up on the table. You know, hey, if you if you ask a question, come get a thing. Nobody wanted one. They, they were just there to, to talk to us, to see, to share in that experience. And it was a really great thing. And I'm, I'm very happy. I'm very proud. I, I think producer Greg is, too, to have been a part of this. Uh, you know, the ride home was was made shorter by the, the, the fact that we could talk about what a great weekend we had had and how how proud we were to have been able to make that, to, to continue to make this, and to see the kind of response we were getting and reaction we were getting from people uh, in person, uh, so far away from home. You know, it's one thing if uh, all of our friends and family in our neighborhood come to, to something. It's another thing to drive, you know, all the way down to, to Pennsylvania from New Hampshire and have that many people show up and, you know, express an interest in this thing that we, you know, just make to to try to make each other laugh and, and to try to entertain people so thank you to uh you know rose and tony for putting on retrocon thank you to everybody who attended retrocon and, and made it another successful year so they can do it again next year uh thank you to all the other guests thank you to everybody who came to the show and said hi and stopped at the table thank you to everybody who who came to the panel Thank you to everybody who gave me stuff. Uh, and thank you for watching this, whether, you, whether you're halfway across the world or whatever. Thank you for watching this and all of our channels. Uh, if you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy. Uh, I'm out. Later.